Good morning, good morning. This is on uh, Thursday. I'm tired, y'all. I had a rough day yesterday. Not too rough, but it's Thursday. This is Jacqueline Richardson, Miss JJ Diamond, Deja, Jackie, whatever y'all call me. Um my eyes swollen this morning from my allergies. Y'all see it? Like somebody bought me in the eye. Yeah. Um, I want to thank God for being woken up today. And all I got is a black eye, so I'm good. The weather's cloudy here in Charlotte. Let me show y'all. See, cloudy, cloudy. You want to see the water? The geese ain't out there right now. They running around. The water. Okay, today is part two of health and fitness. Y'all bear with me because my allergies are acting up. The weather's cloudy, um, the trees, but I just love outdoors. So, um, today is part two of, of health and fitness. Uh, yesterday, I was rudely interrupted by my children and the, the mates. Um, hold on, my earring is coming out. Um, yeah, I was really interrupted. Um, but the podcast is over anyway, so that's why I decided to make it a part two. Um, today we're going to talk about, um, some of the things that you can eat, um, to change your lifestyle. Um, and... To use it on a regular basis, not just trying it. Um, you have to implement it in your household, you know, for everyday use so you can stay healthy. Now, um, a lot of people talk about coconut oil. You know, coconut oil um, is very healthy for you. It's natural. Um, for the most part, it's not good when you're frying food. Um, I personally don't like it. Okay, and I like to saute a lot of my stuff. I like to um, fry chicken every now and again, you know, um, but I wouldn't use coconut oil. Um, olive oil, oh, and the other thing is coconut oil burns faster, and that's one of the reasons why um, I wouldn't use coconut oil. It's not good. It's real heavy, so when it melts, it, like like, burns real fast. You know, so that's not something that you want to uh, implement if you like frying stuff or sautéing stuff. Olive oil. Olive oil is, is excellent. It's really light. Um, we use it a lot when we're sautéing foods. Uh, when we're um, grilling food on the stove, you put a little olive oil at the bottom of the grill pan. Um, we use the olive oil when we're, like, cooking fish sometimes. We'll... Um, Base it in um, olive oil before we put it in. And olive oil is very good for you. Then we also have avocado oil. Well, I, y'all know I told y'all yesterday that avocados have very good fat in it. So, um, you can also use avocado oil. Now, I don't use too much oil, period. Um, and when I do use oils, uh, most of the time it's either canola oil, because I can't stand vegetable oil. I hate the way it smells. But, you know, a lot of people still use vegetable oil. Um, but I'm canola oil, and I use a lot of sprays. I don't use the actual oil. I use a lot of spray, um, the, uh, the avocado oil spray, the canola oil spray, or sometimes the coconut oil spray. You know, I just don't like the way the coconut um, cooks an egg. You know what I mean? So I very rarely buy that. Um, however, if I want to use coconut oil for something then I will, I will use it. <clears throat> but for the most part, it's um, the avocado and olive oil that I use um, when I'm cooking like an egg or um, maybe some turkey bacon. I might spray some in the, in the pan, you know, um, making pancakes, stuff like that. I will use the uh, olive oil to do that. So, yeah, um, you have to check your oils. you got to start with that, okay? 
um, the cholesterol, the cholesterol thing is really, really um, serious here in um, America because we like everything fried, you know, fried, fried, fried. But I've never been one to really eat too much fried food because I had a stomach issue very, very young. So um, I wasn't eating too many, you know, too much fried food. Um, the quietest kept. I didn't eat too much fried food until I came to Charlotte. And I'm going to just be honest with y'all. You know, I never really ate too much of uh, fried food. You know, because down here, uh, these people, they love fried chicken. That's what they eat, you know. And I get it, you know. But um, I personally, when I was living up north, like I was telling my daughter the other day, um, she said, um, what you cooking tonight, Ma? And I said, oh, some chicken. And uh, I forgot what else I was cooking. Some, I don't know what I was cooking. But anyway, so she was like, you're going to bake it or broil it? I said, um, no, I'm going to fry it. She said, fry it? Since when you eat fried chicken? I said, oh, since I've been down here to Charlotte. Yeah, they have changed me for the bad. So <laughs> um, she was like, oh, no. Um, why? And I'm like, I don't know. Everybody walking around eating fried chicken. So, you know, I'll be eating and get sick on the stomach. Because what the oils do to me is I, it makes my stomach ripe and then I have to use the bathroom. So for some people, that's what happens. And for some people, it doesn't. But um, that's what it does for me. So I try to stay away from that fried chicken. Um, I The other thing that I do personally, and I think y'all might have seen it in some of my other videos when I was uh, maybe barbecuing, um, I soak my meat in vinegar. And that's to get the extra fat and um, kill any... Uh, bacteria that's on the meat, you know. So I soak. You can when you soak your meat in vinegar, you can see the fat, literally see the fat in the water, you know. Um, people say, well, why would I do that? Why would you do that? Because you don't want all that extra fat going in your body, you know. Even though some people love eating the fat and the skin on the meat, you know. But I'm one that don't, don't do it. And these are the things that I've in, implemented in my life. You know, um, at one point in time, I was only eating chicken cutlets. You know, um, no fat. Um, and that was it, just the meat. And I would bake it, you know, slow bake it so it can have a little juice to it. And that would be my meat, you know. Um, and I lived like that for a very, very long time. You know, it was only cutlets. That's it. So... These are the things that you have to implement in your life in order to keep that weight down and keep yourself healthy, you know, and this is what I had to do. Um, trying to think of what else. Um, vegetables, vegetables. There's a lot of different type of vegetables. And they have, they have went over and beyond with these vegetables for us to try to get our kids to eat vegetables because vegetables are the number one key, you know. Um, I am a lover of cauliflower. I've been introduced within the last year to cauliflower rice. You know, um, so instead of having regular rice, I can have my vegetable as my rice. You know, um, it's, it's very good. It tastes like cauliflower. You know, you can put your know, whatever dinner you have, sauces with your dinner, right over the cauliflower, you know, and that excludes the carbohydrates that's in the rice. You know, um, the other thing with the, with the, with the real rice, uh, that I do, uh, to keep a lot of the, uh, starch away from the rice. Some people boil the rice before they actually, um, cook it, but when they do that, it becomes parboiled, okay? And that means some of the starch that you cooked it in is still going to be inside the rice. So, what I do is I completely wash my rice until it's clear. And it takes time, people. I mean, <clears throat> cooking is not easy. And healthy eating is not easy. You know, um, so you just have to dedicate yourself and prepare uh, your food the proper way. And I sometimes take 10, 15 minutes depending on how much starch is on this rice. You know, um, and I wash it and I wash it. This is actually long grain. Um, jasmine rice is better for you, they say. Um, I like jasmine rice, but I don't like the sweet taste with certain foods. You know, um, with Chinese foods, I can deal with it. Um, but not with, like, when I'm making my curry chicken, if I'm having jerk, I can't, I can't mess with it. I have to have the long grain. And, uh, parboiled, like I said, is not, um, 
that great because they boiled the rice before hand and some of that starch that they, they boiled is still in the rice, you know, so you don't really want to buy a parboil, you know. I, I'm i long grain, you know, I don't do the Uncle Ben's because um, that's parboiled rice. Um, I always call that the rice for people that can't cook. If you can't cook rice, then that's the rice that you use, you know, but it's not hard to cook rice. And rice is one of the meals that you can eat and not gain that much weight. Okay, it depends on what you put on the rice is what makes you gain the weight. When people put a whole, like if you have chili and you got chili, even though chili is healthy for you, um, but you got the tomato, you have the uh, the meat, you have the beans. It's actually an excellent uh, health source with, with chili. Um, and we have pile a whole bunch of rice and then pile a whole bunch of chili on top of it, <laughs> you know, and that can be uh, very unhealthy, you know, but it's good and hearty to the belly. So you really only need like a little bowl. Um, when, I, when you're eating chili, you really just need, I'm trying to get like of a size. Let me, let me sit this down real quick so I can show y'all. When you're eating chili, the bowl should be no bigger than this, okay? No bigger than that. Um, that's just a serving. Um, one serving is all you need. You know, people, they always want to overeat. You know, if you want something else to eat in three hours because your belly has uh, gotten rid of the chili, then that's fine. But don't overeat. Because when you overeat, it takes longer for your, your food to digest. You know what I mean? You eat enough for your body to stay fueled. <clears throat> and, you know, you, you exercise or whatever you're doing. And, and, I mean, exercise can be a million and one things, y'all. Um, sex is even an exercise, whether y'all know it or not. Okay? You burn calories during sex as well. So, you could be doing exercise around the house, cleaning, having sex, whatever you do. And... You're going to burn that up, and then you're going to get hungry again. But then you go and get a small snack. And then this is where, when your fruit comes into play. Uh, nuts come into play. Like, I eat a lot of cashews. Cashews, I love cashews. Ugh. Uh, I love them. I love hot cashews when I shouldn't be eating spicy stuff because of my allergies. Because then I wake up and come like this. Okay, sometime. Um, let me see. They have now cauliflower tater tots. Okay, y'all know the little potatoes um, called tater tots. All the kids love them. Well, now they have them in cauliflower. So that's a good way to get your children to eat vegetables. And I believe they have them in broccoli too. Broccoli with cheese and the little tater tots. You know, um, vegetables is the key, people. Uh, we need those, those vitamins. Um, they have the vitamins that they have... Um, actually keep your immune system built, uh, very high in antioxidants, um, cancer blockers, you know, um, so we want to make sure our kids get these things, you know, um, I, I personally say find a, a vegetable that your child loves and run it with them, you know what I mean, try to introduce them to as many as you can, but if he's like, oh, I don't like this one, I don't like that one. Try to spice it up as much as you can. Like, my, my daughter, Eja, <coughs> she's a broccoli lover. I can give her broccoli every day, you know. Um, and she's one, too, that if we don't have meat, she doesn't care. You know, we can make a stir-fry broccoli, and she's good, you know. Um, but my other my other child, well, he's not, he doesn't live in a home anymore, but I had to make a meat with him. You know, he like, where's the meat? I, I want meat, chicken, something. You know, um, he just had to have the meat. Um, but you can take a variety of vegetables and make them, you know, um, and the kids will, will learn to love them, you know, and eat them, you know. Um, and you got to start them young so when they get older, they'll say to themselves, I got to have this, you know, um, with my meals. You know, when they go to the market as an adult, you know, um, they go to the market, okay, I got my meat, I got my starch, um, I got my vegetable, you know. Um, and they have it already. 
you know, um, and that's how my people brought me up. Um, they made sure I knew what to have at the table when it was time to eat, you know. And like I told, tell people, we used to eat dinner at 5 o'clock every night, 5 p.m., okay, like clockwork, okay. Um, we lived in the South Bronx, on 53rd between Cortland and Melrose, and by 5 p.m., I was in my house. People could tell you they would never see me outside at 5 p.m., okay. From 5 to probably 6, 6.30 I was not outside, you know, um, I came home, and my family, though, they wasn't big on health, okay, they would just eat, you know, they would let me sit down and eat a whole box of Pop-Tarts while I am doing my homework right before dinner, okay, and then I turn around and eat dinner, so I was a little, you know, <laughs> thick <laughs> when um, I was coming up, you know, and I wish that they would have uh, taught me that portion, but this is where, um, I come to play, you know, I'm breaking that curse of being um, obese or um, unhealthy because I'm eating anything, you know, um, I'm breaking that curse for my family because that's what they did, you know, and by nine o'clock, if we were still woke watching sports, I'm going to say not nine o'clock, maybe 7.30, and we were still woke uh, watching sports because my family watched sports um, highly, football, basketball, tennis, um, track, um, they was athlete people, and, um, they would say, y'all hungry? It's seven o'clock, because we might have had something small for dinner, so now it's time to go around to the Chinese restaurant and get some meal, a couple of chicken wings and, and french fries for us to all share while we watching, you know, um, the sports. So, you know, I was, like I said, a little hefty when I was coming up. You know, I was I was thick, you know, I had a big old booty, and I hated it, you know. And when I got rid of it, I was so thankful, you know. And then it kills me when I um, get into this uh, era of music. Everything is about how much butt you have, you know. And I'm like, I've been trying to get rid of my butt for, like, ten years. And here they talking about... You need some butt. And I'm like, no, I, I just can't do this. You know, so this is where I told myself, um, I have to just be who I am. You know what I mean? And little booties mat matter. You know, I need to stay healthy and I don't care what nobody says, you know. And I'm not going to no doctor to put fat on my body. I'm not doing none of that, okay, because my goal is to be healthy because I got young very I mean I got sick very young you know um, I was sick by the time I was 17 I had ulcers um, and a lot of it came from the stress of my life and if y'all read my book um, if y'all read my story that's in the book Women Survive and Thrive The Faith to Forgive what happened to me and my little brother um, you would understand why I had ulcers at 17 Okay, and um, I had a baby by 17 and went through a whole bunch of other stuff by the, by the age of 17. So, um, yeah, by then, um, I had acids burning holes in my stomach, okay, and had complete ulcers. And it takes time to get ulcers, people. It just don't happen overnight, you know. It's a repeated, um, a repeated thing that goes on in your belly. You know, and I couldn't eat for one year, over a year. You know, um, the people on um, in, in, in the South Bronx can tell you um, I wouldn't eat no food. Um, I was drinking Ensure, my Lanta. You know, they made fun of me. You know, it was in a joking way. You know, I'm a, um, I have a, a pharmacy in my purse because I had to have these things if I start feeling sick and I'm out and about with my people, you know, because I didn't want to ruin their time because I'm I'm sick, you know. I got to sit down for a moment because I got bad cramping in my stomach. The acids is eating up my belly, you know. Um, so I always wanted to try to make myself feel better when I'm out having a social life. And I, I, I didn't want to stop living my life because I was ill, you know. Um, so the... The ulcers took about a year to heal in my belly before I actually put food back in my mouth, you know. Um, and it started out with small uh, pancakes, bread, um, was the only thing I was able to uh, receive and keep in my belly. 
So yeah, I went through a lot with that illness and um, I couldn't digest meat. Um, it was really, really hard. So that's why I had the nutrition um, thing put in place because they had to find things that wouldn't uh, hurt my belly, you know, because I used to be in a lot of pain. I would be bent over. Matter of fact, I was working out uh, when I was in Maryland one time and um, I said, I need a new, new, something new to drink, you know, um, and I'll never forget going in the store and they had this muscle milk. Now, milk really tears my be belly up, but it wasn't, it was supposed to be more vitamins than milk. Well, I drank this thing and it tasted great. And about two hours later, I was bent over in the bathroom, uh, calling for God, you know, because the pain was just so unbearable, you know. So there's certain things that you may not be able to tolerate. And if you can't, don't don't drink it no more. People tell you, well, this is what's going to work. Help you lose weight. Don't hurt your body. You know, I'm trying to, to get this weight off, you know. And I see a lot of people like on TikTok, they want to lose the weight. You know, they, they got to the point where they, you know, it's not about, you know, people talking about you, oh, you big, or oh, you look like this, or you, um, you obese. It's not even about that anymore. People don't even let that affect them anymore. But what affects them is their health, you know, and when they see that their health is going down and they may not survive too much longer because of, of their eating habits or... It can be, I had a, a friend, as a matter of fact, her name was Jackie as well. Um, she was in Buffalo, and she had a thyroid issue, okay? And that with that thyroid issue, she kept eating and eating and eating. And we didn't understand why she kept getting so big. But it was the thyroids, you know, the imbalance in her body. Now, with they did for her to help her is they gave her uh I think it's a um the thing for the belly that to close the belly up. I forget the name of these medical terminologies. Um and she lost the weight. But it was done falsely, you know, and she was really sick behind it, getting that stomach uh thing closed up. She was really sick behind that, you know, but she did lose the weight. Now, I was told, too, when I when I was up in Buffalo that I had a thyroid issue. And it's crazy because when I moved out of Buffalo, um, I wasn't told anything else about thyroids. I would bring it up to my doctor and I would say, um, how's my thyroids? And he would say, oh, fine. And look at the papers. Oh, your thyroids is fine. And I'm like, that's funny because when I was in over here, they told me I had some thyroid issues going on. So, that's when I started just investigating um, the things that I eat. You know, when you eat certain foods, when you come to new areas, you wind up eating new different foods. Or if you change your, your diet, you wind up eating different foods. And these things affect, like, your thyroids, um, your... Um, like up there, I used to eat a lot of buffalo wings. I don't know if that had an effect on my thyroids, okay? Um, but when I got to Maryland, I was eating healthy because everybody there eats healthy, you know? Um, you know, a lot of people, <clears throat> and I want to touch base on this real quick. A lot of people, when you say Maryland, people always think Baltimore, okay? But even when you say Baltimore, the people still eat healthy there, okay? They may, Baltimore may look crazy, um, Baltimore may have a lot of drugs, even rats, but the people eat healthy, okay? They work out, okay? And this is the thing that I experienced 15 years ago moving to Maryland, okay? Um, even the kids, everybody was active. This is what you do. You, you, you work hard, you play hard. That's, that's, that's Maryland's model, you know? Work hard. And then weekend time come or whatever days you got off, you play hard and they respect it. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If you get drunk and fall over, <laughs> they don't care because you have worked hard. And they know you worked hard because you have things to prove that you've worked hard. You understand what I'm saying? So, they said, all right, well, you got a $500,000 home. 
nice car, you know, you taking care of your kids. If you want to get drunk and fall over, fall over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we seek your success. You know, um, and that's what I loved about Maryland. You know, they, they don't really judge you, you know, too much about things that you do and things that you have, as long as they can see the success. And it's success with them. It's not uh, the shoes on your feet, you know. It's, it's not um, the clothes you wear, you know. I mean, of course, they want everybody to look neat in the state. But it's it's different. It's just different, you know. Um, and I love Maryland. I'm going to always love Maryland. I don't care what anybody say. Um, they just hit different. You know, I mean, it's just, they just, they just different, you know, and I, and I, I respect them, love them, and I'm still a resident of Maryland. I'm going to always be a resident of Maryland, uh, just like I'm a resident of New York. So, not too many people in Maryland um, is broke. Um, you will find a job, a full-time job, Okay. They don't play about that. That's one thing they don't play about. We will find you some work. They got warehouses up the gazoo. Okay? Everywhere. Everywhere so you can get a job. Okay? Temp agencies. Everywhere. You know, um, right on the main roads of any main road where main, most of the people go, like in Harford County, you're going to find a temp agency or warehouses where you can go find a job. Everybody's going to have a job, you know, whether you go to hotels to get a job, the hospital, um, like I said, warehouses, stores, it doesn't matter. Everybody gets a job, okay? <laughs> so, it just takes time some time, because um, like I, I said, Maryland is one of them states where you have to be groomed, you know? Um, they like their city to look good, the people in their city, you know? And I respect it. You know, everybody has to look room. The things that I see here in Charlotte would never go down in Maryland. People is not coming outside with their hair sticking all up all over their head. Okay? That's a no-no in Maryland. Okay? Everybody be looking at you like you're crazy. Okay? But, um, and we're going to talk about hygiene and grooming. Um, maybe tomorrow uh, I'll touch base on that hygiene and grooming. Um, because I noticed people did want me to talk about that. So I'm going to be talking about that. Uh, keeping your hygiene and your grooming up. Um, oh, it's a misty rain out here. I don't like when it misty rain. That's how you get sick, that misty rain. But anyway, um, getting back to the, the, the eating, the eating, the eating. Um, if you want to eat healthy fish... You can dedicate yourself to tuna, salmon, mackerel. Those are the three healthiest fish that you can eat. Okay, all that other stuff, they, I mean, like they got flounder and all this other stuff. Yeah, it's good, but it's not as healthy as those three. Okay, um, when you want to get those natural oils in your body um, the natural all the vitamins I told y'all before salmon has a lot of vitamins and it's very heart healthy the omega is like through the roof when it comes to salmon we do know that salmon is very expensive okay whether you buy it fresh or buy it in a can but you make it Try to make it your business to dedicate yourself to buying some salmon. Now, we have pink salmon and we have red salmon, okay? Um, red salmon is really hard to get, okay? I notice they don't even sell it in the stores too much anymore. Uh, and if, if they do sell it, it's like $7 a can, okay? Um, but it's a must-have, okay? We must get the omega-3 to keep our heart um, pumping. You know, um, and, and clear. It's to cl keep your arteries clear. That's what it does. Okay, that's what the Omega does, if, if for those that don't know. Um, this is why we can't have all this cholesterol blocking our arteries. And then you want to turn around and eat some salmon and think it's going to unblock. 
no, it's not going to work that way. So make sure you don't be eating all this cholesterol to try to have to unblock them. You want to keep them unblocked. Okay? Um, we talked about vegetables. We talked about um, fish, chicken, chicken. Um, we talked about chicken and trying to get all the fat off of it um, by soaking it in vinegar. I'm getting all that excess fat. Um, let me see. Fruits. Now, fruits, it's funny with fruit. Okay, because we have so many different fruits. We have grapes, we have apples, we have oranges, we have tangerines, mandarins, we have um, pomegranates. It's pomegranate season, y'all, and I love pomegranate. Okay, that is one of my favorite fruits, um, which is very, very high in antioxidants. So, y'all, it's a must get right now, especially with all these things going on. We want to keep our immune systems built. Lemons, limes. Very high um, pHs, so build your immune system. Okay, and these are things that you're supposed to have in your body on a daily basis, people. Okay, sometimes people will see me walking around with lemon water. You know, um, that's to keep my immune system high because I take a lot of allergy medicine. Y'all see how I wake wake up, so I have no other choice but to take my allergy medicine. Um, or sometimes I won't be able to see. Okay. And when you take a lot of medications, okay, and I only take two. I only take two. There's some people my age that take like 10, okay, or 15, some younger than me. And I, I go to their house and I'm like, hold on, let me take my medication. And I'm like, all of that? What are you taking all that for? Well, my high blood pressure, my cholesterol, um, my depression, my this, my that. And we're going to talk about meditating and depression next week. That's something we're going to talk about next week. Um... Monday, we're going to talk about meditation. Um, here come they, they're cutting lawn and making all this noise. But it's the best place for me to be, y'all, because I'm trying to tell you. And then they're going to bother me. So, and they ain't came out here to bother me. So I hope he stay over there because this podcast will be ending in the next 12 minutes. Um, we're talking about the fruits and lemons. I drink a lot of lemon water. I used to drink lemon water with, with cucumbers in it, okay? And um, I started drinking it to try to curb my appetite. This is not going to work, people. Here he comes. Y'all want to see him? I was saying, y'all see me with um, lemon water and cucumber, and I would drink that. Um, I used to drink it to try to help uh, digest my stomach. This ain't gonna work. I gotta go inside, y'all, so I can finish this up. Now we can hear a little bit better. Now I'm stuck in the bathroom, y'all. Because Egypt is in school, so I can't be out there. The the balcony was like the best place to be. Um, In the living room, my significant other, he's watching his little stories. And... It's the only place I could be. So, <laughs> as I was saying, about the lemon water and um, cucumber, I started drinking that um, about maybe seven years ago. And it was to help curb my appetite. Because um, sometimes I would, I would go into a depression and I want all these cakes and, you know, um, just snacks. There's nothing but snacks. 
And I was like, okay, I got to do something to curb my appetite. And they said it was good to curb your appetite, but that's not what it did for me. Okay, it made, actually made me eat more. Okay, but the reason why it made me eat more, and I'm going to tell y'all why, is because it was cleaning my belly and making my belly feel hungry. Okay, and it gave me some energy. But you need food in your body to burn off of. So I did more research on it and it was telling me how good it was for um, my body to keep my immune system built, um, to give me energy, to keep my blood clean, you know. And that's the other thing I want to talk about real quick before we, we um, I end this podcast. Vinegar, vinegar. I'm going to leave the, the, uh, the lemons and limes alone for right now. But y'all know what, what it does. And I, and I just told y'all. Um, but vinegar. Vinegar, apple cider vinegar is one that cleans your blood daily. Detoxes your blood daily. And we talk about detoxing all the time. And we detox our bellies. Okay? But are you detoxing your blood? Anything that you eat goes into your bloodstream. Okay? So with that being said, you got to detox your blood on a daily basis because we touch base with stuff that may be bad with us, bad for us. Because we don't always know in every package that we buy if they're always telling us the truth about what's, what's in that packaging that we're eating and putting in our bodies. So I will always detox. I detox with apple cider vinegar every single day of my life. I drink a, a, a shot of apple cider vinegar, okay? And I don't got so used to it. Like some people use water. I turns it up, okay? I, that's how I used to it. I'm just used to it. I buy apple cider vinegar with honey. Y'all know honey is a natural um, antibiotic. Okay, um, honey and ginger. Um, ginger helps my belly. Okay, ginger helps kill off bacteria, bad bacteria in your body, in your stomach. Um, that's why you see a lot of people drinking ginger ale when they get stomach aches because it helps them. You know, um, <clears throat> this is the other thing I want to touch base on turmeric. And I know it's a lot of people's getting on it, um, but they're using it in the vinegar. You know, um, people, turmeric can be used as a seasoning in your food. You don't just have to buy it with the vinegar. Um, you put it on your food. Like when I make my curry, being that it's yellowish, I put it on my curry, you know. Um, but I put it on a lot of my food. You know, sometimes when I make a tilapia and I will, I will um, cut the tilapia up. In the pan with green peppers and onions, and I'll throw a little turmeric on there. Turmeric is very good for information. Okay, and these are the type of foods that you want to eat, and, and, and the herbs and spices you want to cook your food in every single day, especially when you have stuff like arthritis. You know what I mean? Um, I was laughing at my daughter yesterday. She's getting older now, so she's starting to feel older. <laughs> and she said, "Mommy, um, I was doing this, and I'm getting so much pain." They talk about I might have rheumatoid arthritis. I'm laughing. I said, yeah, you probably do. You know, she's like, well, like, not why you laughing, but like, well, why are you saying this? I said, well, you know, this is what happens when you get older. And we have these things, but you have to control it. Okay, this is the thing that people don't do. They don't control it. They deal with the pain. There are a lot of doctors that give them all this medication to, 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 um, to keep the pain away. Okay, the pain really never goes away. It's just that the pain, you don't feel it because it's numb because of the medication. Okay, instead of saying, hey, you have to change your diet right now because you have rheumatoid arthritis or you have arthritis and this is what you need to do to keep the inflammation out of your body daily. What they do is they give them all of these medications that eventually do not work. Okay, and then it turns into full-fledged arthritis. And then they're wondering why now they can't walk. Now they need a walker. Now they need a wheelchair. When if they would have addressed it when they was younger, okay, meaning eating it right, eating healthy, working out. I was getting arthritis symptoms back in my 30s, okay. Anybody that can tell you that, that lived with me or was around me would tell you how much pain I used to be in. Okay, and I would lay down and tell them, please rub my legs, rub my legs, it just hurts so bad, please, please. And they would all get around me, and I was young, okay, and start rubbing my legs and rubbing me. You know, this was before the car accident, okay, and then when the car accident came, that just tripled it, okay. But 
I found my cure through nutrition, okay? I don't suffer like the average person that has arthritis, okay, on a daily basis. Every now and again, around the time that my menstrual may come because I'm bloated and the inflammation is in my body, um, and that's something that I just couldn't, I can't fight that. I, I've tried to figure out the ways um, on how not to get bloated during menstrual time, but it just happens and I can't, I can't beat that one either, you know, um, so I've learned to eat the foods that would keep the inflammation down out of my body and it wouldn't hurt, you know, um, uh, won't hurt. Also, um, the Diamond Way, um, that I've created for you guys, which will be available next year, um, I created that not only for my allergies, but for my body in a whole. You know, your body needs certain things in order to um, heal. And everybody's body is different. Like, people will tell me, hey, um, your body hurting? Get, get it nice. You know, and being it, I was, I was a, a runner. You know what I'm saying? I, I ran, run. I was in pain a lot. You know what I mean? So I was like, what am I going to do about this pain? And you know, the, the, the football players, they get a nice, okay? But then five, ten years down the line, they're not playing no more, okay? You, you watch it. They're not playing no more because their bodies has has been, the, the bones is like dense now. So they, they, they can't, they can't play. This hurts. They start, the move they make, they start breaking. The bones start breaking. Um... So I had tried ice at first, you know, and I was like, okay, but they use ice, so I'm going to use ice. And I said, this is not right. I'm not feeling right. I'm, my, my, my body was like stiff, and I just wasn't right. So this is when I went to the heat. You know, people say, oh, I said, run me a bath, like to my kids or whatever. And I come in there and be like, this water cold. They like, that water ain't cold. It's warm, huh? And I'm like, no, 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 no. That water's cold. I like my, my water piping hot, Okay. And I mean, enough where I can stand it, but I like it piping hot. And I put my salt bath in there, and I lay back, and my legs will feel better instantly. Instantly, I'm done. You know what I mean? And this is why I decided to create the Diamond Way um, for, for everybody, so that way they can do the same and stop struggling with the arthritis, stop struggling with... Um, Sinus issues, you know, I mean, we're going to continue to struggle with sinus and allergies. That's not going anywhere. But we can make it easier, okay? And anything that God has his hands on, and I tell people this every day, anything that God has his hands on, it things become easy, okay? It's never hard. So when you hear these people say, oh, it's hard to do this and it's hard to do that, that's because God doesn't have his hand on it. So you got to continue praying and continue to figure out the way, how will God do this? Read the Bible. You understand know what I'm saying? And then you'll be able to figure out how God will do this. And then things will get easier. Anything that God covers and have his hands on is not hard. Okay? And just like with the, the arthritis situation, I eat foods that God put on the earth. You know, that's why I laugh at the guys when they're like, well, we God put here for us to smoke. And I, even though I don't smoke weed, I laugh at them because, yeah, it's here. God put it there. You know what I mean? So, I don't know if he put it there for y'all to smoke, but y'all do, and y'all enjoy it, and it is what it is. But there's other herbs here, just like marijuana, that's going to help us, that God put right here on the earth. Okay? Now, some people use... Um, the um, marijuana to get high and relax. That's what they do. Okay? I use eucalyptus. Okay? When I take my bath, my eucalyptus and the steam, you would think I smoke too much when I get up out of the tub. And I gotta go straight to sleep. And I'm just giving y'all the facts. Okay? And it's something from God's earth. Okay? You don't have to be taking all of these pills and handmade medications to feel like you want to feel. It's right here on God's earth, you know, and <laughs> I'm going to teach y'all more about this, you know, um, when it comes 
close to time for me to release uh, the diamond weight in stores. I'm going to explain more and more and more to you guys.